All right, let's go ahead and get started. Good morning, everyone. Thank you all for joining us today for our parts and sketching uh, webinar for What's New Content for SolidWorks 2016. So to get started today, uh, we have quick welcome introductions for um, the What's New Content for this year. After that, we'll actually have the sections broken down into four different sections today to present the What's New Content. Hopefully everyone got my graphic here, understanding today is Wednesday. It's also the halfway mark in our presentation. So we've completed half the presentations now. We have uh, today's presentation, tomorrow's, and then we have uh, one next week. So keep in mind, we do have three more presentations available uh, throughout the rest of the webinar series. Now, with me today, I have presenting uh, Gordon Purcell out of Arizona. Gordon's one of our Arizona product managers. He'll be helping me out with some of the content today. Um, I also have Peter Estes and Maurice Cherian from our uh, tech support team. Peter's in Fresno, and Mo is actually out of our San Diego office. So those guys will be helping me out with any questions that you guys might have throughout the presentation. We're going to get started today talking about our sketching section, so all the what's new content for SOLIDWORKS 2016 as far as sketching. We do have uh, some pretty awesome things that have changed in 2016 that I kind of want to go through for you, let you know what all the different um, enhancements are make a workflow a little bit easier. So I'm going to transition into SOLIDWORKS. We're going to take a look at this component today. Now, uh, some of the changes have really been added to help with the existing workflow. We're not going to see a whole bunch of added new features or buttons that we can click on today. What we're going to see is an enhancement to the general workflow, so the things that we've done uh, in previous or throughout the years with the software. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and access the underlying sketch on this component here. And we can get into this component that has quite a bit of detail, right? So I'm going to go ahead and make this normal too so we can look at it from the front. One of the latest enhancements for SOLIDWORKS 2016 is actually the ability now to go and hide all of these dimensions. So if we look at this thing, it can be overwhelming to evaluate this model and see what all these dimensions are looking for and hard to understand what the underlying sketch actually looks like. So new in SOLIDWORKS 2016, you actually notice that there's a new option to hide sketch or hide uh, sketch dimensions. So I'm going to go ahead and select that option and you'll notice that all the dimensions are just now simply hidden. They're not removed, they're just now not visible. And that can be toggled back and forth. Additionally, SOLIDWORKS has worked a little bit on the dynamic portion, understanding what you're trying to, to accomplish with the model. You'll notice now that midpoints actually dynamically highlight. So when you move your mouse over a midpoint in a line, uh, you'll notice that you do get that dynamic highlight. This will happen on edges, lines, basically anything that can have that midpoint relationship there. All right, and so for the next thing we have here, SOLIDWORKS has done a lot of work to try and help us minimize mouse movement and also minimize frustration. So what we've done in previous years with SOLIDWORKS is we go in and apply these different relationships. We've always had this nice heads up toolbar that pops up, right? Gives me the ability to do one of these actions. I can either create a relationship, I can go in and create the smart dimension, whatever I might be looking to accomplish. In previous years, I'd go in and actually create the relation and this bar would essentially disappear. You'll notice this year that once you create the relation, it doesn't actually remove itself. No hotkey needed just selecting the first option actually maintains this field for us. So we can go on and continue with what we're doing. We no longer have to deselect, reselect to apply the next option. So in this case, if I wanted to apply something like a smart dimension, I'll simply apply the smart dimension. And you'll notice that once I apply the smart dimension option, all the rest of the dimensions are now shown again for me so I can see what's going on with the sketch. So I'll go ahead and adjust that dimension there. We'll get out of that, uh, that smart dimension functionality. Also, You'll now see that you can create a smart dimension from a pre-selection. So in this case, if I pre-select this option, select my smart dimension tool, the dimension's placed for me. I no longer have to go through uh, the process of reselecting the option that I'm looking for. So selecting the first option, control selecting the second, and then using the option for the smart feature functionality will actually open the appropriate dimension type for me. So in this case, the uh, linear dimension. All right. Now you'll also notice in the Sketch Features tab, on the top there's a new button here, this Instant 2D. So some of you might have become familiar with the Instant 3D on the Features tab for 3D geometry as you try and push and pull geometry. New in SOLIDWORKS 2016, you'll notice you now have that functionality for SOLIDWORKS uh, sketching. So clicking on a dimension in the sketch, I can simply change it from this user interface. Additionally, You'll notice that there's now blue dots at the end of the dimensions with the Instant 2D turned on. I can grab that blue dot and start to change the size of the dimension simply by dragging it along the ruler.
Now for our next one, I'm going to actually use a different sketch here. So we have our component we've been working on a little bit to more fully define. There's been a couple of other changes in SOLIDWORKS 2016 to help us as far as functionality. So one of those changes is now the ability to actually edit an offset geometry or an offset sketch to reverse the direction after it's been placed. So in this case, we have this offset sketch, three millimeter offset from this outside edge here. Selecting the dimension, you'll notice in the property manager tab that there's now a button that allows me to reverse direction on the left hand side over here. Hitting this will actually bring it inside versus outside. Essentially what we did before was that negative value, right? Now, for one of the biggest game changing uh, sketch enhancements I think we're seeing this year, go ahead and go normal too. I'm going to take a, a change to this sketch that we're seeing here. So I'll edit the existing sketch. And the new change for SOLIDWORKS 2016 is now the ability to detach one of these lines from its, uh, from its merge point. So in this case, we have this line. It has two shared merge points, right? If I try and grab this and move this line, I don't really get any response. I'm not getting this thing to pull the way I might want it to, right? New in SOLIDWORKS 2016, you'll notice when you select a line, you actually have a right-click option on the line that allows you to perform this action called detach segment on, drab, on drag. This option can be inserted in a number of different uh, places, so right-click, or for some of us that like to use the shortcut heads up, we have the detach segment on drag option in the shortcuts bar. So I'll go ahead and turn that on for this line. You'll notice with this line now, I can drag this endpoint and start to manipulate it, start to pull it around. Make sure I turn it on here. Yep, detach on drag. We can start to re, uh, reposition this line. So in this case, if I want to reposition it now to the midpoint, you can simply drag it and place it at the midpoint here. We'll go ahead and pull this out just a little bit, get the placement the way we're looking for. And I can go in and dimension this thing as need be. The nice thing with this is I no longer have to go in and delete this, uh, this line here, so I'm not going to get any rebuild errors now once I exit the sketch or complete the sketch. So exiting the sketch, everything's maintained for me, no rebuild errors in my tree. All right. Additionally, last year we also introduced this new functionality called uh, Segment. So Segment was a tool that I demonstrated this way last year. I used the hole wizard. And to insert the position of the different holes in the hole wizard, we actually came in and drew a circle doing the outline of the uh, component. Turned that circle into a construction geometry. And we use this new functionality called segment, so tools, sketch tools, and segment. Inside of this uh, segment tool, we can actually go in and on this arc or on this uh, uh, circle that we put into our sketch here, we can insert a number of different sketch points. New in SOLARX 2016, these segment points actually get an equal distant relationship. So you'll see as it creates it, I can now drag these points and they'll maintain their relative positions from one to the next as I drag them in a circle. So each one is now getting a relationship built in with it. Additionally, if we were to delete one of these sketch points, the relationship is maintained, and it will simply move them over to, or to accommodate the loss of one of the entities. So we have our circle here. I'll delete the first component. You'll see that all the different components shift to make up for that additional spacing. Aside from that, if you didn't want to delete them, you do have the ability to now re-edit the segmentation that's been incurred. So right-clicking on the relationship will give you the option to edit. Once I edit the segment points, I can simply go in and use the uh, toggle button here, and all the purple points will now be my inserted segment points. So in this case, if I want to do four points, selecting the option for four with my green check mark, we'll go in and push those points into the sketch for me. All right. And for my last enhancement here in SOLIDWORKS sketching, I'm actually going to use this from the top level sketch or from the top level of the assembly. I'm going to access this, uh, this component here. I'm going to go normal to on this face. I'm going to edit this gasket, this uh, gasket valve that we're trying to insert. So do a quick edit, and I'm going to take this top level reference. New inside of SOLIDWORKS 2015, you'll see that convert entities now has an option for uh, converting inside loops. So I'm going to go ahead and access convert entities. Let me create a sketch. 
access my convert entities. And then you'll notice when I select this, I have an option on the left hand side to select all inner loops. So I can either go in and select individual loops one by one, or I can select this option for all inner loops and we'll look at all the inner loop profiles here for us. Selecting that all inner loops will grab each of those components for me and pull them into my assembly. Pull them into my component for me. Now as I exit the sketch, I can perform that extrude and my gasket should be present. And they grab each of those ge uh, geometry pieces. So just to reiterate what we've seen in SOLIDWORKS 2016 as far as sketching, we have this new functionality for drag, uh, detach on drag. We have the ability now to edit those segment sketches, to hide sketch dimensions, and we have that new instant 2D capability, kind of the functionality that we saw with instant 3D. We can pre-select for different dimension types, and we have enhanced workflow to save us time and mouse travel by not having that bar disappear when we use it. And for the last thing, we saw the converting inside loops with our convert entities. All right, so for our next section, I have Gordon presenting our uh, geometry creation section. Okay, Brad, that was an awesome segment, pun intended. All right, that's my joke for the day. <laughs> all right, so I think we can all agree that we're trying to put more detail into our assemblies, and we probably all can agree that we'd like to speed up that process. And we may do that for a number of reasons, right? We want to um, use some of these models in detail for simulation. We may want to use it downstream or in other departments for technical communication or illustrations. Uh, there's just a number of reasons we want to get more accurate mass, more accurate bill of materials, that sort of thing, um, and drive that from engineering. So let's take a look at how we can speed up that process with modeling some of the standard geometry pro profiles. And examples that I have here, I have this torsion spring where it would take a number of steps to model that using sweeps and profiles, and that can be much more automated. Um, there's a couple examples I have to apply that. Uh, and then as far as modeling threads, this is a powerful feature. You guys are going to love this new thread feature. I have a couple examples of how that can be implemented. So let's take a look at uh, the first example, starting with the spring. And bear with me as I get used to Windows 10. Okay. All right. Great. So first we're going to look at the sweep feature. And this is a, uh, a boss sweep feature. And we see a new option here called circular profile and I can enter a diameter. So this is only for circular profiles. And then I'm going to select this curve on the screen. And we have all the same powerful features we had um, have with sweep here, including merge tangent faces, as well as making this thin feature. Do we want to make this out of wire or do we want to make this out of a tube? Um, so we can do either. I'll make it out of a, a, a thin feature here, but when I do the thin feature, I want to give it a, th a thickness again. So let's go ahead and hit OK on that. And we can see, um, again, that's going to save us a lot of steps. Previously, we would have to draw a profile and have this Pierce relationship along the path. And um, I've gotten a lot of phone calls over the years um, how to create that Pierce relationship. So I think this is going to be a great feature and speed that up. Here we can see that it's not quite tangent. Another great improvement, previously, um, curve type features were always absorbed into the parent feature. And it wasn't that uncommon where we actually needed to delete the sweep feature to um, edit some of these sketches. So that's been improved where the, the curve features are no longer inherited or absorbed by the parent feature. So let's go back. Let's just say, um, give you an example how we can take advantage of that. I'm going to try to use that old D key here. Or actually, let's just jump over to here and um, edit that sketch. All right, and we can see that Again, there's a relationship here where this is there, there's no tangent relationship. I need to actually go over here and show this curve. Let's turn that up so we can see. And now we have our helix here, and we can actually add a tangent relationship to that 3D section um, in that curve, and we hit OK. Um, our merge faces here will show us a nice tangent transition um, from this bend section into the helix. So that's a great improvement. Another example I have for that is cuts. So I have this plate. Okay, let's go to the plate. 
in this example is thinking how to apply this and maybe you have like a heater element or in the mold industry you might want to be cutting a circular profile or a runner into this block. So we have the same ability here with the swept cut feature. We can have a circular profile again and then we can put in a diameter. Let's just call this um, 0.25 inches. Select our, our path. We can cut that geometry through there. That's a great feature. That should save you a lot of steps. Previously, um, I tried to give you an example where this would be a little bit complicated to, to remove that material. You'd use a series of extrudes or revolves, um, this is, or, or you'd have to use a sweep feature. Okay, so let's move on to the next example. There's also been improvements to the sweep in general, not only the circular profile, but as well as end conditions. And what I mean by that, I'm going to, in this example, I'm going to leave this as a sketch profile like you're used to and select the path. The first thing you may notice is that the profile isn't at the end of the path, which was required previously. So let's go ahead and select this. And now we have some great new controls here. Or I can say I want to go this uh, direction one or direction two or in both directions. Um, this still supports all the great options as far as follow path and twisting. In this example, I'm just going to say, um, let's go ahead and follow this path and let's add a twist value here. All right, and let's say this is in revolutions. You know, I'm going to say let's twist it in direction one, um, one revolution, and direction two, one revolution. All right. So that's the enhancements to the sweep feature. I think those are both really powerful examples where you can have the circular profile and, um, and have a little more control around the direction of the swept profile as well for those end conditions. Let's jump over to how we modeled um, to our thread feature. So if you notice I have here on the heads up toolbar, I have a new command called thread. I'm going to give you a little bit more insight as to far how this works and how to set this up, but let's, um, let's get started. The first thing you want to select here is your, I guess, it, I guess you got to understand whether you're doing a, um, a, ta a tap or a die, whether in a male or a female thread. In this example, it's going to be a female thread. Um, so again, I just have the OD of the threads modeled. And when I make this selection, um, it's going to match that OD here. And it's essentially going to put the female thread in there. Then the next thing I want to select is the, out of the box you'll have inch die tap, inch a metric die and tap. Um, I have some other examples here for custom library profiles that I've created for today. I'll we'll get into that in a second. The first one I want to look at this would be a um, metric die, and then again I'm going to pick the size here. And the next thing we'll do is there have different end conditions whether you want to control the number of revolutions or blind. Let's just say we want to go up to a section. Typically, when you're tapping things, you want to make sure it removes all the material. Um, and again, I might want to just actually run this, if I was thread grinding this, run this through that material so I can offset that a certain distance. Let's just say I want to offset it, I don't know, five millimeters. Right, again, just make sure my tap runs through and removes all the material. So I can do that in the opposite direction back here as well. I can, in my start condition, and again, I can flip that direction to make sure it runs back through all the material. So let's make that, let's just leave that at one. Okay, so let's just start with that. So this is a single pitch thread, right? And we can see that that's a wonderful tool. The performance is really good as well on this. Um, we can also change this. Maybe we want to do something like a multi-pitch thread. So let's go ahead and edit that feature. Okay, so down here, we have some additional controls, right? Notice I do have um, cut extrude and whether you can, whether you want it to be a male or a female thread, those options are in there. Orientation of the thread, left or right-handed, and then further down or over here, we can control the pitch. So let's just say I want this to be a three millimeter pitch instead of using the pitch within the library profile. We can modify that and hit OK. Awesome. So then from there, if you have a multi-pitch, you might use like a, a circular pattern um, to, sh to orient the thread start position. So we can go through that. We can just grab a circular pattern, um, pick our axes here, pick the features, 
that we'd like to pattern. Again, the spaces here will be three. We'll grab that and hit OK. Now we have a multi-pitch thread. And we get asked all the time whether we want to show the threads for technical illustrations, clarification of manufacturing, or simulation. So the real powerful feature. Now I'm going to show you a little bit more in depth about setting these profiles up in another example. Let's close this model. Get rid of this guy, clean this up. Okay, so got a couple, I got a lot open here, guys, so bear with me. So the next example, we're going to use this worm gear, or the screw feed system, right? Um, and so, so we might actually want to model the screw on here. So let's go ahead and I want to have a custom library profile here for that. So let's jump over to that. What you, when you're creating these profiles, what's important to you, I'm just going to catch the, the important things here and then you can get the rest for the help files or through our um, update training sessions. But essentially, you want to just start by drawing a vertical line and that represents your pitch line or where it's contacting the outside diameter or the edge that I'm selecting. So in this case, the default pitch will be 100 millimeters and it's, again, the, it will, the start position will be on that edge and then the, you obviously you have the profile diameters here as well. Um, it transfers this 130 diameter over as far as the OD. Again, some of these parameters are editable as well. Um, if the geometry is on the right hand side, that will model and extrude it. Ex that will actually create geometry or add geometry. If you model this profile on the left hand side, it will default to removing or cutting away geometry. So that's kind of how that works. So let's get out of here and jump back to our screw system. Let's give you this example. Okay, so we'll go back over to our thread feature. And the first thing I'm going to do is change my, um, my library profile. And then I have lots of different sizes in here. Of course, configurations are well supported. And we'll go ahead and pick our start edge. And then we'll say again we want to go up to a selection. So we'll pick this face up here. And again, I might not want to, because I'm adding material, go past that point. I might I want to actually start before stop before that selection. So we'll offset that and we'll just move that back. Let's just call it 15 millimeters in the opposite direction. And down here, I have two options, right? Again, that library profile had the profile on the right-hand side of the center line. So I need to select the option to extrude or add geometry. And then the green represents that it will be an extruded swept or a boss type swept profile. So that's a great new feature um, out of the box. It's going to support all the threads, but it can be customized in a way to, um, you know, based on how you would want to use it to speed up your process. Okay, so I'm going to just go back to my slides. Okay, so I hope in this section you saw how we can use some of the standard features or enhancements in SOLIDWORKS 2016 to speed up um, sweeps in general with the circular profile, how we can use the end conditions as well. Um, in any direction, as well as the twist and control options are supported for that. And, um, and again, then the curves are not absorbed by the parent feature. So with that said, I'm going to pass it back to Brad for his next section. For this next part, um, I actually have a feature I want to spend a little bit of time on versus talking about just a generic section. There's some uh, added functionality this year to the patterns features. So I want to take a couple minutes here to talk about what's been updated with feature or with the feature called patterns. Now to get started today, I'm going to go ahead and use this model, and I have a couple different pattern functionalities I want to show you. New in SolidWorks 2016, they've actually enhanced the way linear patterns can be added. So I'm going to go ahead and start by just zooming into this area. What I'd like to do is I want to feature this component here. So I'm going to start by adding just a quick linear pattern. New to SolidWorks 2016, you'll see now that you can select different bodies or different uh, entities to start the pattern. So in this case, I can actually select the cylindrical face here. And you'll notice that it gives me that as a reference now for starting this component. I can use the heads-up toolbar here to reverse the direction. So simply clicking on the arrow now will reverse the direction of the pattern. So everything can be done graphically within the workspace. Now if I do, I do want to select one of these features here. So I'll select the features option, select my first component here. And I can graphically on the screen again update these, uh, the spacing or the number of instances. So in this case, if I wanted 50 millimeter spacing with four instances, that's all done here just graphically now on the screen. So 
The enhancement to the linear pattern now is that it does support those cylindrical faces. It also supports things like reference planes and planar faces, so along with a number of other components. So we no longer have to go in and just model up a straight edge or a sketch to, to reference this linear sketch based off of. Now, the next thing I want to talk about is it actually an enhancement to a variable pattern. So in this instance, I'm actually going to look at an existing variable pattern that we have in our model here. So let's go ahead and orient the model. We're going to take a look at this variable pattern that we're seeing. In SOLIDWORKS 2016, there's been a number of different enhancements to uh, enhance the functionality of this, make this thing uh, more usable, per se. So I'm going to access this variable pattern, and we'll edit the pattern table here so we can pull this stuff up. Now, new in SOLIDWORKS 2016, you can now use zero and negative values to set up uh, different dimensions. So in this case, if I want to set the value at zero, I'm not going to get an error anymore when I put these things in. So in this case, if I want to do negative 17, those positive negative values or these zero values aren't uh, causing any more problems. So we'll go ahead and update the preview here. And I did one positive, one negative, so one above, one below. Additionally, uh, variables that are inserted from the pattern into an equation are now highlighted for us. So we get the nice E symbol here, and it's all highlighted. All right, now for the real big bang. In SOLIDWORKS 2016, you'll now see that there's an option to actually import from Excel. So for these variable patterns, sometimes it's easier for us to understand what we want to do or what we want to accomplish simply by going to Excel and setting up a number of different instances and calling out these exact uh, components. So from this, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to select the option for importing from Excel. I'm going to set this option as that offset grip pattern Excel. Once I select it, hit open and it'll import all of those different uh, rows into my current pattern here for me. So it just basically builds this thing out from the get-go. Hitting my OK button and updating the preview will then update this, uh, this variable pattern on the screen for me. If we want to do this in Excel, we don't have to start from Excel. We also have the functionality within that edit pattern table to export the current document to Excel as well. So if we're not familiar with the syntax needed to build this uh, pattern out, we can simply start with one or a couple instances, export it to Excel, and then go through the process of iterating in Excel. So I'm going to go ahead and import one more here. We'll just do a straight grip pattern, open, and allow the software to build that pattern. So this year with our pattern functionality, there's not too much in the way of time base, but it's incredibly time saving. The functionality for going into Excel to add or edit these things is going to save us a lot of time and also a lot of frustration. We no longer have to go into the model and model the features in such a way that everything can be positive in those tables. So we can now use those zero base functions in those uh, negative values. So that's all I have to show you guys in the uh, pattern functionality. So what we're going to do now is we're going to transition to our last section with Gordon Purcell for our sheet metal weld mitts functionality. Okay, all right, welcome back. Um, so if you didn't know, SOLIDWORKS has always had some really powerful tools, or specialty tools, for designing sheet metal components, um, structural, um, structure for designing structural designs such as this um, system over here, um, specialty tools for designing injection molds, that sort of thing. In this section, we're going to look at some of the enhancements, mostly specifically to the sheet metal tools and to the weldment tools. And then again, these are just some examples of um, what I'm going to talk about here in a second. So let's jump over to SOLIDWORKS, starting with the sheet metal tools. There we go. Okay, so so in this um, support frame system, there's a couple of things here, right? We have um, some standard sheet metal components and then we have some sheet metal components that are more swept in nature, almost look like they're formed in nature. Um, SOLIDWORKS has a couple of to tools for that. Um, we have the loft, we were able to loft those types of shapes and profiles. We're also, um, they've also added the sweep feature a couple years ago. So let's start with the sweep feature here. Let's jump over to that. So. Let's go to sheet metal and um, our swept flange feature. So similar to the sweep I was showing momentarily ago, um, we want to pick a profile and then we want to select the path. All right, and I'm just going to leave these as sharp corners. SOLIDWORKS is going to know to put the, uh, the bend, default bend radius in there for me. Um, and then we can flatten that out, right? There's not a whole lot new there. Uh, 
as far as that process goes, but what was a limitation was showing the, using the sweat plan and showing the hole locations. So now we can um, actually show all the hole locations for laser cutting inside of the flattened pattern or water cutting, that sort of thing. Let's go ahead and add an extruded cut using this profile. Make sure that goes through all the material and exit out of there. Right, so you can see I'm going through multiple bends. I go through and flatten that. So some great enhancements to go not only through the bends, but multiple bends um, to create those flat patterns using the swept flange. Let's go back to my assembly and take a look at some of the enhancements to the edge flange. Okay, so down here we have a pretty standard support bracket. Let's go ahead and edit this component. Grab our sheet metal tools and pull an edge flange on there. And we'll just drag him up to here somewhere. And let's make sure that it goes, um, probably would have been easier if I hit this other component, but I'll make sure it's parallel to the support bracket. Actually, let me cancel out of here and get out of edit part mode for a second. And I just want to use the tab key and hide that component. It's going to be easier for everybody to see. So we'll go back and edit this component. Pull our edge flange on here again. Right, so the edge flange is one of the most com probably the most common feature we use in sheet metal, probably next to the base flange, right? And one of the limitations for years was we couldn't pull the edge flange past um, with outside of its boundary conditions here. And when we go into the edge ed edit um, flange profile, um, essentially we couldn't take this edge and we couldn't pull this one up there or we couldn't pull this down. We had to kind of model and walk around and put all the corner reliefs in. So we can now do that. That's pretty awesome. I'm just going to throw a couple dimensions on here real quick. This like 95. And okay, that sounds good. And we'll finish that up. All right, so now you can see that we can put that edge flange on there. It's no problem. It also puts all the corner relief in there, so that's going to be a great time saver. saver. Let's jump over to weldments next. Close out of this assembly. Okay. So there's been some great enhancements in the weldments package, right? Um, I think they just, a lot of the stuff is like, it's like, where was that been? This makes total sense. So let's, let's jump into weldments. The first thing, we have a couple sketch profiles up here. So when we go into our structural member, and we're going to pick um, something from the ISO standard in this case here, I'm going to grab a rectangular tube and pull that across this arch on the top. The first thing you see is just how much cleaner this looks. In prior releases, it, it pretty much used the first digit to order everything. So the smallest sizes weren't necessarily the first size that you saw. So this to me is like, where has that been my whole life? It just makes sense. So I can I can jump down to 70. It also will be able to do is remember the last um, two selections you made while you're in that current session, which is nice. So let's go ahead and just um, create a group here, add this profile. We'll come back to a couple of nice options here. We've got a second group and a third group. All right, we're going to build this arch across the top and hit OK. All right, so we have that. The next thing I want to show you, we have these 3D views down here, so I can just zoom into this section. It makes it really great. It's kind of like getting a space key. We've always had this end cap function, and last year what they did is they made it the ability to tuck the end caps inside of the tube. So let's go ahead and take a look at that. We can tuck that into the tube, let's say um, 5 or 10, you know, that's the thickness there, and we can tuck it in about 10 millimeters, and we'll hit OK. But before, we had to go back and actually edit the feature to modify those dimensional values, and now if you click on here, you can see that the values are directly right in the tree. You can use the Instant 3D to adjust that or just clicking on the value. So that's, again, it just makes sense um, to have those values there. It's easier than editing the feature. Now, this is a nice feature, too. Um, in the SOLIDWORKS assembly, you can use the tab key to hide and show components. So we can hit tab now in multi-body parts, and that hides components. And then shift in tab will show those components. And that works the same way in the assembly. That works for solid bodies and multi-body parts and for surface bodies. I have another example here. I want to jump over to a library profile part. 
right? I want to put a wood bench into this um, into this into the structure, right? So I basically came up with a custom library profile um, for a wood plank. It might not be industry standard, but anyway, in my mind, uh, that makes sense, right? So, but here I have different materials set at the level, and if we look at um, the configured material, we can see that I have different material types for those profiles. All right, and if you didn't know, this has been a nice enhancement in the last year, the year before. We actually, structural members support configurations where you don't have to create a profile sketch for each size. So, I wanted to kind of hit on all that. I'm going to not save any of that. Down here, we want to put a bench. Let's make sure my sketch is shown. Okay, all right, so I have a first sketch here for a wood plank. So, let's go back over to structural member. I'm going to jump down into my custom profile here called wood, some configured deck boards, and let's pick the first one here, say one by four, and you have this option here, transfer material from the profile. Let's go ahead and check that. Pick my board. Great. Again, in these powerful tools with Waldman's and structures, we can locate that profile. Maybe I want to bring this guy in. Okay, that's great. So let's take a look, let's actually do a quick little linear pattern here and pattern a couple of things. You can see right away that it's going to bring the material appearance across and the, um, and the material properties as well. So it's going to give you more accurate you know, mass properties, bill of materials, all that good stuff. So let's do a quick linear pattern along this direction. Let's grab these bodies down here and we'll make that about 100 millimeters. They're probably going to overlap a little bit since I modeled that in inches and this is in metric. But anyway, so there's a couple of things. First, you see the tooltip. It matches my profile type, just like this guy over here, right? It was modeled with something, and the tooltip gives me good feedback. The feature tree now makes a lot more sense, too. It actually uses the profile type for that structural member feature. So all that stuff just makes sense to me. If we jump up to the, um, to the cut list, the cut list, again, can now use the description. It can use the profile type as well. So it's just it's going to make it easier to, to get organized and find the different um, types of profiles that you're using within your design. If we look at the properties here, these are the cut list properties. You can see that the total length comes across as well as the SolidWorks materials that were built into the library feature. One other small little change they did is they made all this stuff resizable in here, and it remembers the um, the sizes as you adjust those. So that's a nice nice little one feature um, as well. And again, the total length is coming across nicely for everything. The last thing I wanted to show is a, a lot of times what people do is they design these things and they might save out substructures as, as um, derived parts. So if we go ahead and to make a um, insert this into a new part, some new options here to include all of the cut list properties into that derived part. So it's going to now include all the cut list properties just like you were in the top level structure into the substructure um, along with the total length. So everybody's going to love that. So now if you have substructures, you can create um, substructure drawings with detailed cut lists. And that's going to take just a second there. It should be about done here. I just got to save that, Let's put it there, and we could again we can look at that cut list over here in the second. We can go into those cut list um, properties. Just pick a member here and just dive right into that. You can look at all those cut list properties. Our total length, all our information um, for that member is coming across nicely on the drive part. So let's jump back over to the PowerPoint presentation here and wrap things up. So in this section, we're able to see a lot of wonderful, you know, specially tooled design, save, design savers, right, as far as time savers go. We saw the swept flange. We were able to cut across bends now for the flat pattern. The edge flange, that's a wonderful tool. It extends beyond the side edges now. Um, you don't have to go in and edit that sketch and, and do all the bend reliefs. Some great enhancements to the um, structural member profile list. As you're selecting your member profile, it also remembers the most recently used at the top. Um, the names of the structural member features are based on the profile. The tooltip uses the same convention. Materials, properties are from the library feature transferred over to the profile. The end cap dimensions hide. Um, be able to interrogate and get useful information about the cut list into drive parts. 
including the total length. Okay, so um, that wraps up my section. I'm going to transfer everything back over to Brad here. Thanks again, everyone, for attending today's webinar. Uh, we look forward to seeing you next time. I'm going to go ahead and end the session now. Any questions you guys may have, please feel free to either email through our tech support or email us uh, me directly.